I guess one question I had for you is during that, that kind of COVID summer where we fully rebuilt everything that first time, you went from 87, 88 to like 94, the 95, the 96, and then you, I think you hit 97, eight or something, something so, somewhere over that, like that, um, end of the summer, early fall. And then you took that into fall as well in games. Um, could you kind of describe like the difference for someone who might be like upper eighties right now? Like what is the difference in feel between that's almost a 10 mile an hour jump right. in velocity? I, obviously you've been up to 93, 94 in the past, but what is the difference in how those mechanics feel 97 versus 88? Right. If you could articulate that. Yeah, I think, I mean, honestly, even when I signed up, I was just hoping to get back to where I was. I was like, okay, give me to 92, 93 and I'm good. And all of a sudden the training came and it was like, hey, my arms really turned on. Like I'm throwing balls 84, 85, 86 without even using my feet at all. Like just sitting there ripping and I was like, okay. So we went to the flat ground and started kind of ripping balls flat ground. And the first one I think was like 90 and then all of a sudden I climbed and it was 92. And I think just the more I started throwing, the more comfortable and confident I felt. And I think just feeling really confident like, my first few throws of the day, I'm like, wow, the ball's coming out really good. And I mean, everyone I think has those days where it's like, it just feels really good. And then it got to the point that I used to drive Cody insane because I'd be like, hey, my flag ground, I'm going to hit 9.5 next week. And he's like, no, you're not. And all of a sudden I go do it. And it's just like, I could feel and catch play so confident and so comfortable on my throw. Ball just zips out. Like at any given time, I could sit there and like, I'm going to throw this ball 83. And like, it just whips out. It didn't take a lot for me. And then especially same thing in the mound, I told Cody, I was like, oh, I'm gonna go hit seven in my first bat. He's like, no, you're not. Like, stop talking about that. And all of a sudden it's like, I just go to the mound and my first throw is like 92. And I'm like, yep, like, here we go. So I think just the difference was, I always felt like a lack of confidence when I was 87, 88. And it wasn't that I was upset so much with 87, 88, it's that I felt like I knew I had more. And I felt like I wasn't being my best self. And then all of a sudden, when I was throwing hard, I was like, okay, this is who I'm supposed to be. Like, this is where I'm supposed to be throwing. So I think a lot of it was just confidence. And I think that was instilled by you. That was instilled by my friends. That was instilled by myself of just like, hey, each given day, like I get out there and I started feeling better every day. Yeah. So I think just the confidence and my ability was really the difference in how my mechanics. Work. Yeah, that's an interesting answer because obviously a part of it is the actual like biomechanics, yeah. the, the, the joint angles and positions and the timing and the, the sequencing tempo, like, Part of it is that like, your elbow not being down here anymore and being in plane. Right. Like you're actually getting a, a hinge in your lower half, a better weight shift. But part of it, like to hear like, you know, that perception from you is like, it's it's confidence. It's not uh, as, like as you started to feel the pattern sink in a little bit more and more and more and more, um, that might explain for you why like your tendency is to like, whatever you are that first or second bullpen, once we do get on the mound, like it's pretty much like a mile an hour a week. Yep. You know, up until you get to that peak point as you just get more and more and more comfortable and confident in those patterns. Yep. So I know it's been it's been interesting to see now now that we are in like a good place mechanically, you've gotten, you know, back to mid nineties in this most recent pro day and like just you know the mental clarity and comfort of knowing like it's there, I still have it. Yeah. Like I don't have to worry about my mechanics positionally. I can worry just about execution, you know, attacking hitters. Like that can that can be the focus now that it's not in yep. the back of your mind like crap, where is my velo going to be here? Is my velo going to be right. here? And the focus can now shift to where it really should be, where ideally we have it all of the off season. Like in a perfect world, you're not worrying about, worrying about velo at all because you just know it's going to be there. Yeah. So um, one of the things I think people don't necessarily realize is that once you build velocity that we're talking about, it's not just like there forever. Yeah. Like certainly dads that we see don't realize this. Yeah. They, you know, they're they'll say, oh, my kid throws 87. It's like, no, your kid throws 82, 83, and he hit 87 at some random showcase one yeah. time. And maybe he, like in bullpens, he throws 82, 83. And so they, they don't necessarily like realize that just because you hit a number one time, like it means that you throw that hard. Right. Um, there actually is a, a real process of like not taking it for granted once you do build that velocity for the first time. And in your case, you know, you ended up coming back after that, that next season, you were back down to 90, 91, like, you lost that confidence. You lost that, you know, everything that you had that fall. Right. Um, and then the following year, again, we built you back to 96, 97. And then again, the following year, um, you were, we were Texas, which we can talk about, uh, had a strong start to the year. And then again, came back like 92, 93, like down below confidence, uh, low again. Yep. Speak to that process because from the outside looking in, a lot of players just think that that velo is always there. Like, oh, it's that just that guy's genetically blessed. They see a guy throwing 97, he's genetically blessed. He's got a 
naturally quick arm right or the parent just thinks that or my kid throws 87 he's gonna always throw 87 for the rest of his career what has that been like going through kind of the roller coaster and could you kind of speak to some of those ups and downs that you've had over the course of off season to in season over the past couple of years right i think a lot of it has been obviously my whole focus was velo and then for, like i feel i end up feeling like almost like rushed into the season it's like all right the season's here now it's like kind of like I talked about changing my focus and then I just stopped thinking about the velo altogether and then so I guess I went through it was that unfortunately that was the kind of COVID year you had a lot of stuff going on I ended up getting COVID I ended up losing weight probably didn't maintain like I should too and then I think that was kind of the first year of losing velo it was just like hey like I took two weeks off from like doing the things I really need to do and I went from hey, I could hit 96 any given today, to like, I'm screaming balls 92, and I don't know why. Like, if I was hitting 92, 93 in games, it's like, all right, like, we're in the right direction. Which, if you would ask me literally three weeks ago, I'd have been like, oh, that stinks. And so I think it's just, if you don't do the things you need to do on a really given basis and don't know what you're doing, then, like, it can disappear. And so I think that was the first year. We built it back, went into Texas, and fall sustained it this fall was good and i think that's just because the lack of pressure and stuff like that i still felt pretty confident it was like i was known as like hey i'm gonna be a power arm i'm gonna throw balls really hard um, going into the early in the season like i threw pretty well walks were still not where i wanted them to be but like i felt confident when i was doing and i think i kind of ended up realizing that i need to find a way to go deeper in games and so I need to kind of be more of a command guy. And I think instead of just being happy with who I was and working on my mental side of, hey, let's go attack hitters. Instead of kind of, I think I was like, oh, I play at Texas. I play against all these big 10 teams. We played UCLA, we played Tennessee, we played LSU, all these big teams. And I, I'd been scared, I think, a lot of times. It was, hey, I need to throw this ball like down and away and hard or I'm gonna get hit. And I think just knowing that, hey, I'm a big stuff guy like I can go right at you. If I throw it middle, middle, it doesn't matter. Like obviously I'm gonna try to throw the ball outside or inside or up or down, but I think the lack of confidence there kind of got me. And then the more scared I got, the more the velo went down, the more I started changing things and just completely losing my identity of who I was.